How's it going guys? Today I just wanted to share with you what I've been doing to make gold on Palia. This isn't going to be, you know, a min-maxed type guide basically, where this is the best possible way to get gold. But for me, this is a solid like 30 enjoyable minutes where you get to level up your skills and there's so many different ways for you to kind of do this. So we're going to start out over by Leafhopper Hills. It's a little bit south of the farm and a little bit west of Remember It's Garden. It's a nice like open field that has a lot of spawns and a lot of different items for you to pick up. Now what I recommend you doing is before you kind of start doing this, get a couple things in your inventory. I'm just using the standard bow right now. That way I don't have to worry about it breaking. All upgrading the bow does is make it kind of easier for you to shoot farther. And I don't think it's the most important thing in the world in this area. Make sure you have, you know, a good amount of arrows. I just have about 400 of the basic ones. You'll probably end up using about half of those. So feel free to take less, but I just always like having more just in case. Make sure that you have a sundrop lily in your inventory, the crystal lake lotus, and the emerald green moss, as well as some of the chapa fur, chapa tail, chapa meat, as well as the Saranook antlers, the hide, and the meat. You don't need all of it because you'll probably get it here in a second, but I like to have those in the inventory and I'll tell you a little bit why in a couple minutes here. So basically, this is pretty straightforward, it's nothing crazy. You're just going to hang out in this area and basically gather and hunt everything. The main reason why this is such a fantastic location is that because the spawns for both the Chapa, the Cernook, and all of those plants are extremely high. So it's really easy for you to get a stack of all of them. If you're using the basic arrows, you're only going to have to take two shots for the deer and one shot for the Chapa. And I mean, they spawn in the tens of twenties. So it's very, very easy. And you're just going to run back and forth, making sure you get as much as possible. And basically just stacking all of that in your inventory to full stack. It is really just that straightforward. Now the reason why I had you get all of those in your inventory in the beginning is because as it goes on and your inventory gets full, we're going to kind of take advantage of the inventory overflow system. This is completely optional. You don't have to do it, but this has made it to where you can farm for much longer than you need to really. And you don't have to go back to the home to basically store everything. So how this works is as your inventory gets full, you'll have those overflow inventory slots. And basically, since you already have both the hides, the tail, the antlers, and the meat in your inventory, as long as you have a stack that is not fully stacked all the way of any of those items, you're able to pick up everything else. So say, for example, you have a full inventory, but you don't have a full stack of Chapa hide. That means you're able to pick up every single item from hunting one of the Chapas and the other two that aren't the meat or sorry, the hide just go into that overflow. Now, if that overflow is full, you don't lose the item. It actually just gets sent to your storage and this will work with everything. But I think in particular, it's extremely good when it comes to both hunting and mining. Now, the reason mining is also good is because as you've noticed, as you hit different nodes, you get different items. Sometimes you get stone, flint, copper, iron, you know, depending on the node that you're hitting. And the same concept works. If you don't have a full stack of iron, for example, but you're able to mine the iron rocks, you'll get stone and flint even if they're stacked all the way. It'll just go into that overflow and then it'll get sent to the storage box. So this is going to make it to where you can farm for much, much longer. Now, you don't have to. It's just a nice little tip if you want to take advantage to it. Now, like I said, you just go around, hunt all the chapa, all the shernook. You pick up all of those plants. You can throw in bug catching if you want to. But in my opinion, bug catching, they just don't stack high enough. They only go to stacks of five. And because of that, you're not really able to get as much gold as you would if you're doing the chapa hide, for example. Because chapa hide, you can actually stack to 50. The plants you can also stack to 30. So when it comes down to it, a stack of five bugs, unless they're the rare ones, are generally going to be significantly worth less. On average, it takes me about 30 minutes to kind of fill up my inventory with full stacks in this area. You can also move over to this other area over here. There's a lot of Chapa spawn as well as the Cernuk, except there's not as many plant spawns. So I don't recommend it unless for some reason there's not a lot of spawns in the other area. The other reason why I like this so much is that they're just one and two shot with the basic bow. If you go into the other area, the Bahari Bay, things take more shots from those basic arrows. And for me, it's important to not have to use all my copper and my iron for those additional arrows. I'm not sure if you noticed, but 
materials in the second area are practically the same exact price as the ones in the first area. They're just significantly harder to actually get. And all items are basically valued based off their rarity. So, you know, commons are worth less. The uncommons are worth a little bit more. And then rares are the most expensive. There are items above that, but you're not really going to get them in a very high quantity, basically. So I kind of exclude anything over rare. Now, taking a look at how much we're going to get for this run, don't forget to take the items out of your storage box. You don't need to if you don't want to, and you don't have to sell any of this. And don't forget the items in your inventory overflow. And for me, right now, with three rows of inventory, and I had a couple different items in my inventory, like my arrows, I had an item I was going to give to an NPC, my food to keep focus up. That whole 30 minute run was worth around 7k gold. And as you can see, I left a little bit early. There's additional stacks that I could have gotten. Now, while this isn't the craziest method in the world, 7k is a super solid amount for you to get all of the recipes that you need, especially when it just takes 30 minutes. It's also a pretty decent farm for you when it comes to foraging and hunting. In that run, I got 7 to 8 hunting. So, in general, I think it's a pretty solid way for you to get a nice little start to the first 10 levels of all of the skills. This is going to make it to where you can afford all of those recipes fairly easily. And you're not going to have to invest a ton of time into it, basically. A second thing that I want to add that I think is very important, make sure that you're always gardening. Even if it's just those two little plots that you got from level one, those nine by nines, just the 18, I did, I think it was like 15 potatoes. And that netted me around 2k worth of gold just from selling all the potatoes. And you don't have to sell them if you don't want to. But gardening is just a nice, simple thing that as long as you stay on top of it and add slowly to it, you can make a ton of really easy passive income. And I'm sure there's a, like a specific way to game it, kind of. But I haven't really stressed myself too much about trying to figure out, you know, what's the best plant to plant when it comes to making gold. And I've just kind of been planting whatever. But make sure that you're always farming. It's a really, really easy thing to do. I wish that they called it farming. I know it's gardening, but that's so frustrating. But make sure your plants are watered. Make sure you're putting fertilizer on there. And make sure that you're weeding all the time. It's something you can do whenever you stop by to maybe put some items in your crafters. And it's just like a solid five minutes of your time. So I highly recommend that you stay on top of it because it is just free money, basically. I really hope this helps everyone that's starting out. I've been having a lot of fun playing this game. And if you have any tips for anyone, leave them down below so that if they stop by here, they're able to take all of your information as well. So I really appreciate it, guys. I appreciate all the support, and I hope to see you on the next one.